Welcome back to Exeter and Lera. In this video, we're taking a look at detailing the track work with details such as oil stains, lifted track beds, and typical heavy uh, weathering. I'll show you how it's all done step by step. Before I start, let's take a look at the real location and get a better idea of the uh, detail that I, I've replicated on the layout. Between platforms one and three, there was originally three lines. The center line was used for non-stopping services or basically for loco run round movements. This was torn up around 1986 and most of the ballast was removed. Over the next few years, a lot of sand was spread around, mostly where the locos would stop. This was used to absorb the oils at the loco shed. As you'd expect, most stations across the network during the 70s, 80s and 90s would have been full of this type of grime and oil, unless the track work was fairly new. Exeter was no exception, and throughout the station it has all various different levels of grime. To start off, I'm going to reinstate the third line. It's not glued down, it's just placed directly onto the baseboard. Using a mix of Woodland Scenics Buff and Grey Blend Medium Ballast, this is used as a base covering all over the land between the two main lines. I aim to fill the uh, space between the sleepers roughly about halfway. All the loose ballast is soaked in uh, isopropyl alcohol. And the uh, track is then lifted. I then cover all the ballast in a watered down PVA. The same ballast mix is added all the way along, sprinkled evenly using a shaker. It's also worth noting to add all the trackside details before the ground texture is added too. Again, all this is glued down the same way as the, uh, the area where the track bed was lifted. For the next layer, I'm using chinchilla sand. Again, this is sprinkled over all the land in between. As well as the land, the track is also giving a dusting too. And the sand will uh, also hide the sleeper webbing imprint that was left behind when the track was originally lifted. Applying the sand over the lines will also create the finer particles that's often found in older ballast. Once the sand is down, this is spread out along the tracks. Just working it down into the ballast.
It's also important just to keep the uh, inside of the rails clear from any grit. All of the sand is glued in place just using isopropanol alcohol and the usual PVA glue mix. With the texture left overnight and not fully dry, I'm now ready to start the first stages of weathering. A mix of burnt umber and uh, black are combined together and this is diluted down to a single cream consistency. Also add just a very small dollop of uh, washing up liquid just to make sure that the paint soaks down between the ballast. The solution is pipette over the entire track bed. Burnt umber paint is also pipetted over the areas of the uh, where the track bed was also torn up. This is continued further along in random spots. Back into the mix solution, this is also added on top of the burnt umber and this just adds some variations of tones. The mix solution is also added all over the remaining land in between the main lines. To enhance the lifted track bed further, the track is placed back into the uh, footprint. Using the sand once again, this is spread in between the lines. The sand is worked to create a nice gentle slope which uh, goes in towards the middle. Again this is glued using the same method as the uh, bits that you saw at the beginning. and a further light covering is done in between the main lines throughout.
taking the sand and sifting it down into a finer mix for a pair of tights. This is mixed together with a sifted dirt mix, which is done the same way. This is shaken all over the areas where the fine sand was placed to absorb oil. This was also pushed into shape, working the sand into any tight areas. And again, just keeping the mix clear from any rail sides. Once this layer is in place, it can then be glued. The pipette water with some dish soap water in it, and uh, this is done all over the top of the rail heads. This would just allow the water to soak through the sand without disturbing it too much. And by repeating the process, the water will eventually creep outwards. I've carried on the process throughout and this has allowed time for the water to soak outwards. Returning to the beginning I can then add more water using the same method and allow the water to soak further without the risk of flooding it. If it gets disturbed, not to worry, just top dress the uh, sand mix again and everything will be back to how it should be. And again, it's all just glued in place using the usual methods. Now it's time to apply the top coats of weathering and again I'm using a mix of the burnt umber and black. Doing this will also draw out the tones uh, that were first applied at the beginning.
Burnt Umbra is also added in random areas just for the variation. Now it's time for some pigment work, using an equal mix of natural and uh, light sienna. This is applied over the areas where the locos were mostly sat. It's brushed into the previous texture just for an even coverage. To lock the pigments in place, I use acrylic thinners. Apply a tiny drop and the capillary action will allow the uh, thinners just to soak into the pigments. For the final part of oil stains, I'm using a mix of burnt umber and black. Being careful not to apply too much to the outside edge will uh, prevent any paint seeping too far outwards. This time I've added more black around 75% ratio and a little thicker than the previous washes. You can also be as random as you like at this particular stage. Heavy oil would accumulate where locos would stop, so more oil is applied. Once the paint is fully dry, this is the part where um, I make the oil really stand out. Using some Humber Old Gloss Coat, I've diluted it down with some thinners enough that it would just soak into the ballast and the texture, but it will also still leave a nice shine. This again is pipetted over the um, areas of heavy oil and through the middle of all the rest of the main lines. Using this method really does enhance all the natural colours that I created with all the paints and just brings the whole scene to life. <laughs> 